Brexit. This will help the City of London compete globally in the wake of Brexit. It's reported the surcharge will be cut from 8% to 3 from April 2023, although the Treasury has not confirmed that figure. Well, let's talk this through with Fahad Kamal, who's Chief Investment Officer at Kleinwart Hambros. Good morning to you. So, of course, we've got the spending review coming up and there's all sorts of uh, rumours, speculation as to what will be in it. But the Treasury uh, has has confirmed that this is something that's likely to be added. Your thoughts? So, uh, Sally, I, I think that, you know, that it's very important to, to recognise that while the headline is that the surcharge is being lowered, what's actually happening under the hood is that taxes on banks are still likely to rise. Right now, the tax rate is made up of the 19% corporate charge plus an 8% surcharge on top, which is keeping in line, about 27% in line with the international uh, banking average. But when taxes rise to 25%, should the surcharge remain unchanged, it will put the UK banks in a very uncompetitive position. So I think what uh, the Chancellor is trying to do is to make sure that we don't end up inadvertently killing the goose that lays the golden eggs. And let's not forget, the finance sector for the UK is certainly that goose, producing about 10% of the overall taxes generated in the country and well over a million jobs. Yeah, I mean, as you say, whether we like it or not, we have to recognise that fact, uh, despite the fact that lots of uh, people in the UK might think, hang on a second, it was the collapse of the banking sector in 2008 that meant uh, we had to uh, pay an awful lot to bail them out, etc. But despite all of that, what is the evidence uh, to suggest that, that Brexit, us leaving the European Union, has caused a lot of uh, business to, to leave London? Well, there's certainly evidence of that. I mean, just if you look at the sheer number of jobs that have gone uh, that have gone abroad, I mean, it's numbering in the tens of thousands to other financial centres, Dublin, uh, Frankfurt, Paris, etc. So there, that is an undeniable truth. The other reality is, Sally, is that if you you know while. You know, the financial sector, as you've said, you know, is probably you know, to some degree fairly criticized for, you know, being the um, in the center of the storm of the great financial crisis. These banks are still suffering as a result of that very same crisis. Stock prices in many instances for most UK banks have not recovered um, to, to the highs of, of those, you know, sort of halcyon days. Um, and the interest rate environment that we see right now, I mean, completely do, uh, apart from the tax, is remains extremely low, which is very, very limiting to how much profit banks can possibly make. Yeah. So I think it's, it's, it's a fair point to make that, that the, the tax rates should stay competitive with, with the international market and make sure the banks don't fall over. And, and just re very briefly, uh, Fahad, to what extent will this surcharge help then in that sense, keeping business in London? Uh, massively, I think. I mean, at, at the very least, it gives banks a fair shot uh, to compete uh, with, their, with their global peers and not an inadvertently uh, larger burden than, than their competitors abroad face. All right. Well, we will watch this space. Not long now till that spending review. Thanks for being on the programme. Thanks. Now, the international publishing industry is gathering for the world's largest book fair in Frankfurt. It opens today. The industry has been buoyed by the pandemic boost to reading, which has seen sales soar in the UK, where sales of physical books rose strongly. Some 202 million paperbacks and hardbacks were sold in the UK in 2020, according to industry figures. Similar picture in the US, where sales hit 751 million last year, the highest figure since 2009. Nine. However, there are fears books could be the latest to join the supply chain crisis as a global paper shortage could see retailers running out of stock. So what is the next chapter looking like for the global publishing industry? Well, let's talk that through with Badur al Qasimi, who's president of the International uh, Publishers Association, joining us live from Frankfurt because you're going to the book fair uh, later. So, so do tell, is there a, a paper crisis in, in the offing? <laughs> Hello everyone, it's really lovely to be back at Frankfurt. As you know, last year, uh, Frankfurt Book Fair was um, cancelled in the physical format. We had to go virtual. So it's really wonderful to be back here in Frankfurt, meeting colleagues from around the world. As you know, uh, Frankfurt Book Fair is one of the oldest book fairs and the largest book fairs in the world. It's really an important global stage for current debates and discussions about publishing trends, but also about social and political trends. 
So as a result, there are a lot of experts here, specialists, professionals, and global media, and not to mention the general public who are here to buy books. So in a sense, it's been it's great to be back. Um, I consider this year to be quite a challenging year for the publishing industry. It's important for us really to take stock of what's happening and really discuss the future, interact with colleagues from around the world and help us build resilience within our industry. But what I asked you about was paper. Uh, uh, is there an issue with regards to that? And, and don't worry if you don't know the answer to that. I wouldn't expect you necessarily to know uh, whether paper as a commodity is about to become something that's hard to get hold of or you yeah, have to pay a lot for even. Uh, I was about to answer your question. It's just really exciting to be back here. And, and I wanted to set the stage for our listeners today to know how significant it is to be back at Frankfurt again after such a, a long hiatus. Paper is uh, an important discussion today about sustainability in publishing and about how the publishing industry can really be more sustainable moving forward. Of course, the pandemic has really shown us the cracks in our industry. It's given us an opportunity to assess what we we need to fix uh, as publishers, but not only publishers, the whole value chain, booksellers, libraries, authors, illustrators, distributors, all need to come together and work on a strategy to make sure our industry is resilient moving forward. All right. And just very briefly, for someone who's writing a book, many tried during the pandemic, what's the most important thing? Just briefly. Writing a book, I think you need a good publisher as the president of the International Publishers Association. I just want to re reiterate how important it is for the publishing industry to survive. I also want to mention that this year we're celebrating our 125th anniversary. So uh, we've been here a long time and I think it's important for us to build you know, stronger relations between authors and publishers and illustrators and the whole value chain of publishing. We've All also right. recently uh, announced a report called the Inspire uh, Report, which is about the sustainability of the industry. And it really paves okay. the way forward for everyone in the industry. Well Thank done. You. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Enjoy. I can tell you're extremely excited, but we've got to leave it there. We're out of time. Have a lovely day to you as well. I'll see you soon. Still very balmy out there for some of us for a late October night, 15, 16 degrees. And Wednesday promises to be another mild day, quite breezy and lots of showers in the forecast too. Our tropical air arrived a couple of days ago. It's still with us. It was very warm yesterday in the south southeast, 21 degrees. We won't quite get that today, but I want to show you the origins of this current of air. So this is the North Atlantic and this is all very warm air across the Atlantic. And here we have the Caribbean. So this is where the air has come from. It's obviously cooled, but it's still pretty balmy. Uh, over this part of Europe. Now this is what it looks like early in the morning. There is some rain around, a wet start to the day in East Anglia in the southeast and lots of heavy showers approaching Cornwall, Devon, parts of Wales too. And in fact these are heavy thundery showers and through the morning into the afternoon they could bring uh, gusts of wind as well but also some sunny spells so quite a changeable day for England and Wales. But for Northern Ireland and most of Scotland it should be dry and bright but notice in the Northwest Highlands here some wet weather come the afternoon. So I say mild again, 18 degrees expected in the southeast and East Anglia. Now end of the week or, or Thursday onwards, it is going to turn quite a bit colder. In fact, a reversal in the wind direction is expected Wednesday into Thursday. In fact, around this area of low pressure, the winds will start to come in from the north. Now right now, this moment, the winds are coming in from the south or southwest. On Thursday, they're coming in almost from the north. This is Arctic air. In fact, some of the showers across Scotland could be wintry. The winds will be strong anyway, particularly along the North Sea coast, touching gale force. I mean, in gusts inland will be around 40 miles an hour or so. So it is going to feel relatively cold compared to what we've got right now. And these are the temperatures, the high temperatures on Thursday, 11 to 13 in the south, single figures in the north. And once again, wintry showers are possible across the mountains of Scotland. And then Thursday night into Friday, uh, the wind uh, dies down as the low pressure pulls away and in fact a high pressure develops across the UK briefly. It was what we call a ridge of high pressure. There'll be some sunshine around as well, uh, but it won't feel quite so cold on Friday because the winds will be lighter still, only around 13 degrees. Bye bye.